Hi, this is Craig Stocks here for Utah Desert Remote Observatories. You can find us online at utahdesertremote.com. Let's process the Lagoon Nebula. So here we have the Lagoon Nebula and we have the five files that you can download to process this yourself. And the idea here is I'll show you how I might process it, maybe a couple different ways. But the real purpose of this is for you to download each one of these five files and try it yourself. Uh, we have the three common narrowband filters, uh, hydrogen with HA, O3 is oxygen, S2 is sulfur. And then I have an RGB version that was captured with red, green, and blue filters. And then lastly, we have just the stars in an image by themselves that was extracted from an RGB version. So what you would do is click on each one of these. It will open in a new window. You can right click and choose Save Image As. And then just go back, grab the next image, Save Image As, and so forth. And that will probably save those in your downloads folder. So let's hop over to Photoshop and let's see what we would do with them. So the first thing I'll do is the same thing I always do if you've watched any of my videos. Go to File, Scripts, Load Files into Stack. And I actually have these in a different folder. So what you'll do is navigate to either your downloads or whatever folder you just use to save those five images. Select all five, click OK, and that will open those in the file list. And then click OK again, and that will load each one of those files as a separate layer, and the layer name will be the file name. So this one, for instance, is RGB, and then there's HA, O3, S2, and STARS. And then once those are all loaded, we'll start organizing and get into the actual color mapping and processing. Now, these all were generated out of PixInsight from some data I've collected over the last few days. Um, it's about seven hours of data in total, as I recall. And I've already done the basic processing in PixInsight. I have other videos that talk about PixInsight and how to do that processing. So you, you, know, you can certainly find those on the channel. And there are lots of other good tutorials on, on PixInsight. I basically did the integration and uh, calibration in PixInsight, processed each image, did a stretch in PixInsight, and then saved the resulting file as a 16-bit TIFF. Now, I've also done some cleanup in Photoshop to get some clean files to work with and then downsampled these. So here are the five files and we need to do a little housekeeping first. Um, basically, the first thing we need to do uh, probably is to put the stars layer on top. So just click and drag that to the top. And just to keep things neat and organized, I'm going to drop this into a group. So I'll tap Control G, that would be Command G on a Mac to create a group with the currently selected layer. And then I'll double click on the group name and name that stars. And since these are the stars on a black background, we'll want to add them back in. And we'll do that by putting this layer group into screen blending mode. And you can see now we see just the stars and whatever's below it shows through. So let's collapse this layer and then we'll turn that off. Next we have the sulfur, again, control G, double click, I'll label this sulfur. I'll close that. Next we have the oxygen. So again, I will, I'm just doing housekeeping at this point. Lastly, the hydrogen. And then at the bottom, I have the RGB, and we'll drop that into a group as well. And we'll just label it RGB. So if you want just a simple uh, color image, net kind of a natural color RGB image, we can turn the stars back on. And we have an RG image, RGB image with stars. 
turn the stars off, and we have an RGB image without stars. But the real fun comes when we start color mapping hydrogen, oxygen, and sulfur. So if I turn the hydrogen layer on, for instance, uh, it's an RGB image. In other words, it has all three channels, red, green, and blue. But the three channels are equal. Uh, so what shows is gray. Anytime red and green and blue are all the same value, what you get is gray. There's no color. It's having differences in red, green, and blue that create the color. So this is a, a monochrome image in RGB color. If I turn on oxygen, for instance, uh, you can see that it looks different. And it's, sometimes it's fun just to turn it on and off and see where the hydrogen and where the oxygen is. If we want to make this into a simple HOO image, that would be hydrogen in red, oxygen in green and blue, <clears throat> the easy way to do that is double click to the right of the layer name. And since this is an RGB image, you can see when the layer style dialog opens up that all three channels are currently checked. If I just turn off the channel we don't want this layer to represent, in this case this is oxygen, we only want green and blue, so we turn off the red. And just like that, we have an HOO image. And if you like it without stars, you can stop there. If you like it with stars, turn the stars back on, and you have an HOO image with or without stars. Sometimes it's fun to play with an HSO image. And to do that, we'll go to the sulfur, and we'll put it in the green channel. Again, it starts out monochrome, so we'll do the same thing. We'll double click, and we'll turn off the red and blue and have just the green channel. And you'll notice this looks kind of odd because it's not only adding, it's also subtracting. And you know, we probably only want it to add brightness to it. So we're going to do another trick. We're going to come up to this blending mode, and we're going to change it to lighten. And what it's doing now is adding green from the sulfur where it's brighter than the background. And we now have an HSO image. And of course, we can do better than that. Uh, the green is pretty green. And we may not want it to be you know, that, that stark. So let's do something different. Let's come back to the sulfur. And let's change this from just green to both red and green. And now we're adding sulfur as an orange color rather than as a pure green color. And since I have the labels on each one of those layers or files, we can see HA is red, O3 is cyan, and S2 now is kind of an orange instead of a green. If we want to then fine tune the brightness, uh, we can just add a, uh, for instance, a levels adjustment layer on top of the, uh, the last layer group, but below the stars. And we can play with the brightness to brighten or darken the midpoints, midtones, highlights, or shadows. Uh, we can also add a color balance adjustment layer if we want to change the color balance. We can add a hue saturation adjustment layer if we want to increase the saturation. And of course, we can turn any one of these on and off. Let's address the sulfur just a minute because it, it still looks pretty green. Let's come back to the sulfur group, and I'm going to click the little triangle here to disclose or to open up that group. And I'm going to now click on the layer itself within the sulfur group, and I'm going to add a curves adjustment layer right on top of the, the sulfur layer. And in the properties panel, we can see the settings for the, the curve. And if you look at this drop down, you'll see that it says RGB. If we open that up, you can see that you can actually individually edit the curve for red, green, and blue. Let's go to the green. And if we grab the curve over here on the right hand side and pull down, watch what happens to the color. It ceases to be so green and becomes a, more of a reddish orange. So it's a, a more natural looking color. Uh, if that gets too dark, if we want to brighten it up, 
I would typically go below the curves layer and back to the, the base layer, add a levels adjustment layer, and now we can change the brightness of that layer, and that will affect how much that sulfur shows through. But the end result of this is now we have a nice HSO image of the lagoon. What if we want an SHO? Well, S is uh, SHO would be sulfur for red, hydrogen in green, oxygen in blue. So let's do that. And I'm just going to get rid of this curve because we won't need it. We may not even need the levels. So we're kind of back to just the red, green, and blue here. And we want hydrogen to be green. And right now it's contributing all three colors. Uh, oxygen is contributing green and blue. Let's change it so it's contributing just to the blue. And then we'll go to the sulfur. Again, I'll double click to bring up that layer dialog box. And here we want to make this red and we want to put it back into a normal blending mode. So we'll bring up the dialog box. I'm going to change the blending mode from lighten back to pass through and we're going to change this to just red. And we now have an SHO version. And well, as we look at this, we would probably decide that we probably want to fine tune. It looks like the oxygen is a little bright. So we'll just open up the oxygen group, click on the layer itself, add a levels adjustment layer. And if we move the midpoint slider to the right, that will darken that down a little bit and and now it becomes just a matter of playing with the color uh, to taste you want you want it to be more green more blue somewhere in between uh, if we want to bring out more of the sulfur we would go to the sulfur layer again click on that layer add a levels adjustment and now we can play with just the red that's being contributed from the sulfur layer we can of course go down to the hydrogen do the same thing, add a levels adjustment layer, and we can play with the amount of green being added by that. And this is all just adjustment to taste. So there we have our SHO image. If we want it with stars, we just click the stars group. And there we have an SHO image of the Lagoon Nebula with stars or without stars. And if we want to compare that to the RGB, we can just turn off all of these layers in between. There's RGB. There's SHO. If you like any one of these, you can save this as a master file. Uh, you can also save copies, but I would encourage you to keep this master file intact with all the layers intact because Invariably, you'll see something later that you want to change, or you'll see an, you know, someone else's version and you'll want to try that. So it's really useful to be able to go back and when you reopen this, if you save it as a Photoshop document with layers, all the layers, all the settings will come back intact and you can pick up where you left off. I hope you found this useful. If you have any questions, be sure to drop them in the comments. If you like content like this, be sure to like and subscribe. And I'll continue making videos showing how to use Photoshop to produce some of the best astrophotography images that you can. So I hope you have a great day today and an even better night tonight under a clear, dark sky. Thanks.